Back to our top story this hour, a disturbing new report about Chinese cyber spying on some of America's most advanced weapons and aircrafts. It, uh, aircraft that lists more than two dozen defense systems whose secret designs were targeted by hackers. Joining us now, the House Intelligence Committee Chairman, Mike Rogers. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for coming in. Well, thanks for you having me. You saw the story in the Washington Post that Chinese hackers have gone through all these plans that the U.S. spent maybe trillions of dollars on to develop some of the most sophisticated weapons, and they stole it. How significant, how serious uh, is this problem? Well, it's tremendously serious, and this is something the intelligence committees have seen for a while. Our intelligence community has been trying to get ahead of for a while. But the, the viciousness and this the volume of attacks, not only by the Chinese, but Russians and others, trying to get the blueprints of our most sensitive material, just breathtaking and they're getting better so their capability for getting into systems and getting that kind of information it's not just the government networks wolf they're also doing the supply chain anybody that's connected to any of our defense industry is really vulnerable to this type of attack. can you can you confirm that just of the washington post story that it was chinese military hackers if you will that stole all this uh, all, all this material i can't confirm what they've gotten but i can tell you that it was the chinese military uh, and they have been aggressively pursuing it. And I will tell you this, and for, for folks at home, well, what does this mean to me? We, some, in some cases, have to go back for any material that may have been stolen, as you can imagine, and redesign it. It costs more money. It costs billions and billions of dollars extra to try to make sure that we're staying ahead uh, of our adversaries with technology. When they steal it, they leap ahead. That means we have to invest more and change that technology. It is a serious problem. In the real world, though, you can't blame the Chinese for trying to steal it. You can't blame the Russians or others for trying to steal this time kind of stuff. But you can blame the U.S. national security uh, infrastructure, if you will, if it can't protect this kind of information. Well, here's something to think about. So about 10% of the networks are government networks. And so we ask our intelligence agencies to go overseas and find out what the bad guys are up to. They bring information back and do a pretty good job about protecting government networks. It's that 90%. There's a common myth that the government or the NSA, the National Security Agency, CIA, others are monitoring that private network. They're not. And so what happens is well, they, should one of our be. they should be. I well, mean, if, I if you have these private that. defense contractors and their security is not good and they're getting access to all this sensitive material and Chinese hackers are stealing it from one of these big defense contractors, that's a that's a major problem. Well, it's a huge problem. We think we have a separate answer by just allowing the government to share malicious source code with the private sector and the private sector to share back. That should happen. Takes Why a hasn't it happened? Well, it passed the House. We're awaiting action in the Senate. I think we're going to get a bill this year, a bipartisan bill, uh, sponsored by myself and, and rank, my ranking member, Dutch Ruppersberger, that will pass uh, in some form this year. I think that will happen. But remember, you don't want your government monitoring the 90% of those private sector networks. I think this is a uniquely American problem, but we have to have a uniquely American solution. I think we have that, uh, and part of that is uh, is making all of the supply chain, everybody from make, that makes the screws for a particular weapon system uh, to that put it together in its final form, and some of those have exceptionally good uh, defenses. It's the weakness of that supply chain. That it's it's one thing trying to steal blueprints, uh, steal technology. It's another thing to use that hacking ability to undermine a power grid or a telecommunications network to do something like that that could grind a, a big chunk of this country to a halt. Is there any evidence the Chinese, for that matter, the Russians want to do that? Absolutely. We've seen it's now and forever more part of military planning. And we saw that uh, in Estonia where the Russians went in because they took a, a statue of a Soviet soldier down from a square. They did a very vicious and effective cyber attack. They prepped the battlefield, if you will, before they went into South Ossetia in Georgia uh, with a cyber attack before they sent their takes in. You know that now this is part of nation state military planning. They will launch an aggressive cyber attack when we're in conflict. Now what should worry people is, yes, Chinese have the capability, yes, the Russians have the capability, but now who is creeping up are Iran, South Korea. They're still a little ways behind. South Korea, an uh, excuse ally? Me, excuse me, North Korea. North Korea. Apologize. Yeah. Thanks for the correction. Right. I'm saying uh, myself, yeah, South yeah, Korea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, we hope they have a defensive capability yeah. anyway. So what you've so seen So what you're now, saying is that Iran and North Korea right. have what? Well, they're gaining in their capability, and they're not rational actors. China isn't going to necessarily shut down our electric grid unless we're in conflict. You can't say that about it.
or uh, North Korea. What's happening is that you've seen that the, the Iranians are here on our shores. They are, have been probing our financial institutions. We know that they have been probing uh, certain uh, electric grids and whatnot. That's a real problem for us because, again, there's a cyber war going on now. Most Americans aren't aware of it, uh, and it's not one that we're well pre uh, prepared to handle from the private sector's perspective. Let me shift to Syria for a moment yeah. while I have you. This report yeah. uh, out now that the U.S. is now the president to ask the Defense Department to take another look at a no-fly zone over Syria to try to deal with Bashar al-Assad, to go ahead and maybe arm some of these Syrian rebels. What do you think? We have to do something. It's destabilizing the region. This is not just about getting involved in a conflict. Uh, Lebanon is starting to deteriorate. The pressure of refugees, the humanitarian crisis on Turkey, on uh, Jordan, uh, the pressure it's putting on Israel when you have now every flavor of terrorists now operating in Syria. And the problem here, Wolf, is that if it deteriorates, if it falls apart, if there's nothing left, you have all of those terrorist groups who want to get a hold of chemical weapons and very sophisticated conventional weapons. This is turning into a disaster beyond its borders, and we need, I think, need to take some serious uh, steps. So you would soon. support a no-fly zone? I would, but not necessarily the way some have called for with planes. We can use our Arab League partners to push down in the north uh, and then from the south uh, and have weapon system capability that would not allow helicopters and airplanes to, to cause havoc What about there. arming uh, the, the rebels? Because there's a lot of concern. Some of those weapons could get in the hands of El Nusra, for example, an al-Qaeda-oriented uh, kind of terror group. Well, the problem is those groups are being armed already. So the Arab League uh, folks have been in there for a year providing weapons. And the one thing that's been missing, I think, is U.S. leadership to make sure that those weapons uh, get into the right hands. So we have the unique capability. This is not about troops on the ground. It's engaging our Air Force. We want to use the Arab League and then we can vet the, the folks who should be getting these weapon systems, train them, and give them intelligence packages to make them much So what I hear you saying, we're going to wrap it up, uh, you would support a limit, some sort of no-fly zone and some sort of pr provision of, uh, of, of hardware, weapons if you will, lethal weapons to the uh, rebels. I would, it, in the cases of which we just talked about. Under yeah. those uh, circumstances, right. it's a tough, tough situation. Though, it's a bad situation. You've got to be more. concerned if those weapons wind up in the wrong hands, which right. they easily could be. Absolutely. Hey, Congressman.